Um, very pleased to take part today. Um, as Laura said, my name is Ken Stanton. I'm a professor here and I'm the head of uh, the School of Mechanical and Materials Engineering. This uh, particular school is the largest of the five schools of engineering at UCD. Uh, we are currently, um, we currently have 32 faculty, although we're growing fast and we'll re recruit a lot of more people this year. We're home to a national research center funded by our national um, funding body, SFI. And that national research center focuses on um, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. It's called iForm. Um, it has particular um, focus on additive manufacturing or 3D printing, especially metal 3D printing. We're also home to um, uh, an SFI research professor, who that's uh, Professor Feng Zhou Fang from, uh, he's originally from China, and in fact uh, retains some uh, activity in Tianjin University as well there. So um, he has quite a large activity, uh, again, in the area of precision manufacturing. We have um, some programs running in China, in fact, in Xi'an. We have a joint college set up at Chang'an uh, University, and that's called CDIC, so Chang'an Dublin International College. Um, so we have uh, lots of uh, uh, activity going, or, going uh, on sort of adjacent to the school. And, because of that, we have very good links to industry. So for example, um, we have very good links to um, Intel Ireland, who are currently building one of the most advanced um, fabrication facilities, just 15 kilometers from our campus here and are good employers of our graduates. And then also we have a, a, a very good relationship with many big players in the medical um, device sector. Ireland is home to quite a lot of um, international uh, multinationals in the area of medical device manufacturing. Um, so making things like um, uh, orthopedic um, uh, prostheses and things like stents and a whole range of other uh, products. So uh, being the largest school, we have quite a, a wide range of programs. Um, nominally, these programs are split into four subjects if you want to think of them as subjects obviously the main one is mechanical engineering and so we have an me or a, um, a masters of engineering in mechanical engineering so all of the so i'll just very quickly touch on the types of programs we have i should have said that first me programs are two years long and have uh, an internship as part of the program um, typically 70 percent of the people who go on an internship will be offered a company, offered a job by the company um, that they did their internship in. And roughly 50% of them will take those jobs, um, others pursuing other opportunities. We also have MNJSC programs, which are one year long. Um, so two semesters and then the following summer as well, when typically a project is undertaken. We then have um, uh, a one professional diploma that I'll touch on, that's a shorter program, um, and also an MEM, which is the Masters of Engineering Management. So both the professional diploma and the MEM are primarily aimed at working professionals, so experienced working engineers. So going back to the ME and the MNJSC programs then, as I said, normally split into four subjects. In mechanical engineering, we have our ME mechanical engineering, and we have a new program, which is an international master's, international ME in manufacturing. Um, that's quite an unusual program and probably um, would, describe, would, would need separate uh, description. Suffice it to say that we do it in partnership with many other leading universities uh, across Europe, whereby students undertake one year at one of the partner universities and one year with us. The next, uh, uh, um, major subject area for our programs is called systems engineering. This has the ME engineering with business program. So this still brings people to full engineering, uh, practicing engineering status, but has um, uh, business components integrated into it. So it's not, um, it's not that it's uh, um, ignoring the, the fundamental engineering requirements of the profession. Um, it's quite a popular program. 
We then also have an MA and JSC in engineering management, um, which again is a very popular program. Um, and then we have those two programs I said were uh, focused on working professionals being the professional diploma in operations excellence and the MEM or masters of engineering management. Um, the third main subject area we have is biomedical engineering and our ME biomedical engineering is one of the largest programs we have. We uh, tend to share that, uh, if you like, with the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. And so there are different flavors of that program you can take, depending on the module choices you, you, would, you would make. Um, and it depends also on whether you're from a primarily electrical, electronic uh, engineering background or whether you're from a mechanical background. And then finally, we have um, the, the, the last and fourth um, subject is material science and engineering. And for uh, material science and engineering, we have both an ME and an MNJSC. So both a two-year and a one-year version. Again, the difference between the two being the integrated internship into the ME. But also um, the ME is accredited in this case, not only by Engineers Ireland, um, but also by an international body called the Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining. So uh, as you can see, quite a wide range of uh, programs, um, one-year programs, two-year programs. And again, just to summarize the main areas being mechanical engineering, systems engineering, biomedical engineering, and uh, material science and engineering. And uh, that concludes my uh, presentation so uh, I'll hand back to Laura, if you're there, Laura. And um... Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, thank you very much, Ken. That was uh, really great. I think it's good insight into the programs that are available in your school, that there's good depth and breadth of the programs that are available and um, something of interest to people who are looking for masters within this space, which is great. Um, so can I have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind me posing them to you, that um, hopefully attendees will find um, valuable. Um, so I just wanted to find out a bit more about obviously career opportunities are a big thing for people pursuing masters um, um, in particular. Um, so what is the industry like in Ireland at the moment in, 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 in the spaces relating to programs that we have on offer within the School of Mechanical and Materials Engineering? It's absolutely booming. I mean, um, the as I said, for, for, for our students who go on internship, um, it's pretty staggering that again, 70% of them will be offered a job by the company that they did their internship with. Um, Ireland is an advanced manufacturing based economy. And again, that's everything from you know, pharmaceuticals to um, medical devices, to things like electronics. So Intel Ireland, again, being a major um, um, partner of ours. Um, you know, just a couple of um, like examples, like one of the most successful biomedical interventions that has come about in recent decades is that of um, using arterial stents instead of, you know, doing a fairly invasive heart bypass operation. 80% of the world's supply of arterial stents is made just in the West of Ireland. Um, you know, just as a, just as a, a, a kind of, an, for example, you know, um, both the Puy-Synthes and um, Stryker have uh, major operations of uh, um, centers of excellence, I should say, and, and operations in the area of metal 3D printing of uh, orthopedic uh, devices in Cork. So, you know, you've got these, these huge pockets of activity and um, our engineers tend to be in demand uh, right across the board. Of course, so also being in Europe, um, with freedom of movement, et cetera, it means that um, our students have lots of opportunities right the way across the, uh, the continent. So, yeah, so, invest, uh, so investing in a master's in this kind of, these kind of areas is, is a good return on investment as far as career opportunities, and particularly in, in Ireland at the moment. It, it, has, it has tended to be, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great, and I think for, for those tuning in, 70% of students coming off internships, walking into a, a kind of a position, um, takes a lot of pressure off the student knowing that they could, before they've even graduated, they potentially have a job, which is, which is great. So thank you for sharing that, Ken. Um, also, another aspect of our degrees that our students, uh, potential students are looking at is the research uh, project or thesis that they would do as part of the degree. Um, if you could maybe talk a little bit about, um, you know, do students pick their own subjects? Is there a list of, of projects available? Is there any opportunities for industry collaboration within those projects and research um, areas? Yeah, thanks, Laura. 
Um, yeah, there's two different approaches, really, uh, and it depends on which type of program you're doing. So if you're doing an ME, um, it tends to be that most of the, well, I would say, sorry, a majority of the students would tend to bring a project back from the company with them. So when I say majority, maybe two thirds or something like that, there is um, a list of projects then offered to students uh, as well. Um, and it's done on the basis of um, kind of whoever's got the highest GPA gets the gets the their first choice. So there's a little bit of a competition maybe for some of the more popular projects, but invariably everybody finds a project they want to do. Um, for the MNJSC programs, there's a, again a mixture. So there's two MNJSC programs. These are the one year programs. For the ME Material Science and Engineering, the project is taken undertaken during the summer months. Um, so in that case, it tends to be a list of projects produced by academics and then offered to students. The numbers of students in that program uh, have tended to be reasonably modest. Um, they would share a lot of their classes, for example, with the ME students. But because of the relatively modest numbers on the MNJC Material Science and Engineering, we have been able to really find projects for people according to their main interest, mm -hmm. as opposed to um, forcing them to do something that they don't want to do. The MNJSC Engineering with Business, sorry, MNJSC Engineering Management, it takes a slightly different approach. And in that case, all of the projects are defined by industry and then undertaken under supervision during the summer months uh, in, in groups. So again, the, the pro program director goes and gets a list of um, projects from industry and those are apportioned to groups and that's how it's um, uh, worked on. Great, and then for obviously students who maybe are more interested in the research maybe than potentially pursuing industry, um, is there PhD and maybe research master's opportunities also available within your school? Uh, oh, of course, yeah. A follow on from a, a top master's. Yeah, no, absolutely. And in fact, um, we tend to have far more opportunities for PhD than we were able to get students for. Um, that's a reflection also of the fact that the demand for our graduates in industry is so high. Um, so we, we are the largest school again in UCD for uh, research uh, student numbers. So we have around 120 uh, PhD students at, at present, um, all fully, well, I think the vast majority of them fully funded. Um, so there's a huge demand for research students. Um, and especially if they're a graduate of one of our programs and we know them, it's, it's a very good way to get onto uh, a funded research uh, path to do a PhD. We also have, yeah, as I say, your research masters available, but I think these days uh, it tends to be a less popular choice than perhaps it was 20 years ago or something like that. Sure. Um, so yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, we, have, we tend to have far more PhD places than we went, than we can easily find. Students. Okay, so I, I think for people tuning in, I think it's good to know whether you're right, whether you're interested in industry, or research or academia, that kind of space, there, there's something on offer within the School of Mechanical Materials in UCD anyway. Um, and then Ken, also within your presentation, you, you touched a little bit upon accreditations that uh, some of our courses have specific accreditations. Um, yeah. What is the value of having a program that is accredited um, and, and why should students be looking at programs that are accredited? Okay, so um, accreditation is a bit of a minefield uh, to get into. Uh, the details of it, but just to look at it at a very simplistic level, um, in some cases, if, if people have an accredited undergraduate primary degree and they come to do even one of our one year ME programs, that can qualify them for uh, professional engineering status and registration with some of the um, institutions. I'm probably getting a little bit too complicated here. So just coming back to the ME programs, they are accredited. So we go undergo through an, an accreditation process with the ME programs. We do not do that with the MNJCs. Um, the primary um, benefit is that some, well, there's two primary benefits really to having an accredited, an accredited qualification. Um, the first is that some companies require it. So some, some companies like, for example, Rolls-Royce 
who are based in the UK, which is you know not too far from here, and who still employ a, a, a lot of our graduates. Um, they they prefer engineers to be accredited because it, it speaks to a level of uh, commitment to the profession, um, and and uh, they like them to be chartered engineers as well. So you need an accredited program to be a chartered engineer. Um, but one of the other primary um, benefits to having an accredited qualification is international mobility. So for example, if you want to apply for a job as an engineer in the United States or Canada or Australia or some other place, there are international agreements between accrediting uh, professional bodies in all of the countries under the so-called Washington Accord. That means that any one of our programs, any one of our accredited programs is recognized, for example, in all of those other territories under the Washington Accord. So if you're applying for a job as a professional engineer in Australia, like I say, Australian authorities can look up a list of accredited programs, see that our program is on the list, and that actually um, assists both in you know, obtaining things like visas, but also in, in, in getting jobs. Great, so it's basically a, a gold seal of approval to say that the standard of education that our students are getting is, is of a high quality. Um, it helps them with um, international mobility and then also for students who may be potentially pursuing chartership or some employment in various companies, it, it's a useful thing to have. Yeah, it's, and, it's, I, you know, it's, and it's even more than a seal of approval. It's, it's, it's almost like a legal, uh, like a, a, a legal entitlement to, okay. to, cert, to, cert, to practice certain things in certain areas. Um, it's it's underwritten by 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 law in, in countries you know regarding who 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 may call themselves an engineer etc. Sure. Okay. Brilliant. Um, and then Ken, just I think another question I have I, I often get is what are the kind of supports available to students who are potentially pre going to pursue a master's with us and um, maybe you see in general or or potentially within your school. I know a lot of our um, academics are very welcoming, very friendly, or very approachable. Have open door policies and things like that. But you want to maybe speak to some of the supports available. Yeah, I mean, um, so the, there's 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 many layers of support at different, um, you know, uh, to think of it as like a, an onion type, uh, you know, with, with many layers and the student in the middle. Like the first the first layer of support are the module coordinators. If a student is having difficulty with any particular module, the next layer of support is the, um, you know, the program director. Who will always take an interest in students' well-being and, and progress. The next layer of support is at college level, and um, we have as well. And for students who may be experiencing any kind of personal difficulties or financial difficulties or um, mental health difficulties or medical difficulties or anything, you know, there are specific supports in place for all of those things right away across the university. Um, so in general, students are, are pretty well cared for, and um, we, we certainly do all that we can to ensure that um, any student who is registered uh, gets every support possible to, to, to uh, finish their, their program of study. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think it's important for people to know that the, there is plenty of supports available. Um, if, you know, as Ken said, regardless of what that, that actually is, um, there's someone there that you can speak to. And also just to, I wanted to highlight then, obviously we have the UCD career development team available. So career support are a big aspect that we offer as well. Um, they help with um, obviously, you know, applying for jobs with either one-to-one -one CV workshops, resume workshops, um, interview skills, interview prep. They also do career fairs on campus. So they invite companies on campus to meet our students. They do lunchtime seminars. So career supports are, are, are really big in UCD as well to help you best fall forward. Um, but yeah, I think uh, there's lots on offer in UCD as far as support, supports available to students. Um, so I think we're going to wrap it up there. We've nearly pretty much bang on time. Uh, thank you to our attendees for tuning in. And thank you, Ken, for your great presentation. 